So welcome to the Hukulo webinar for today, the 30th of December. I am your host, Alicia from Temple Beautiful. And today- Hukulo webinar for today, oh. the 30th of December. <laughs> Hang I'm on, let's get that muted. Alicia from Temple Beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's try this again. So um, I'm Alicia from Temple Beautiful. I'm going to be your moderator today. And today we're talking with Wendy from Languages of Lights with the subject of light language. We have just a few announcements before we begin. Um, there is a $10 a month would support the channel and also allows you to participate and ask questions on Saturday when Jim channels. All other webinars are free. So definitely check out the hukulo.org. Um, we have a Sedona workshop that still has some seats available, so check that out as well. More information on hukulo.org. And if you are in the Burbank area today, there is a channel panel with quite a few well-known channels and our very own Karen Newman. Um, also, we just ask that you mute or turn off your notifications like me. Uh, and so we can... Um, let you guys know. If you have questions, let me know and I will call you up just so we don't have multiple people trying to talk over one another. And we are looking forward to today. So I'm going to introduce Wendy. Wendy <laughs> from Languages Hi, of Lights. everyone. <laughs> Thank you so much for all your patience, everyone, um, and all of our technical difficulties today. Um, I found uh, our, our technical uh, guru um, behind the scenes um, had some issues this morning and was unable to get everything set up for us this morning. So um, we were just trying to decide how we could best do this and um, we just thought it would be easier to do it through Alicia's channel, Temple Beautiful, so that um, she could handle the <laughs> technical moderator stuff and um, I wouldn't have to worry too much about that. So I thank you all so much and I see so many new faces and not really new. Michelle, Michelle, Jody, Johannes, love you guys. Ellie, you're here. Uh, who is that? I Iwa. Um, and who else? I, sorry, I got to put my glasses on. I can't read really well in here. <laughs> Salash, thank you so much, all of you, for being here. Um, so many of my new Facebook pals are out there who are joining for the first time. Thank you so much. I'm so excited that you're all here. Um, you know, I I been trying to breathe here and get my wits about me um, as we were working through this stuff, and I think that all of you pretty much know what light languages are. Um, and I think what I'd like and to do I think that all of you um oh hey Christine, I'm gonna I'm gonna mute you there, doll. <laughs> oh she did, okay. Hi. <laughs> Welcome, sweetie. Glad to see you here. Um thank you all again for being here. Um I think what I'm gonna do at the moment just to kind of give myself a little breather and peace of mind. I kind of raise our vibration. I think I'm just going to start out really quick and just take a breath. Um, Alicia and I both need, I think, to take a little breath too. And thank you all. I want to send you all my deepest gratitude and love for being here with us today at the Human Colony Saturday webinar. And this is really, um, talk about coming full circle. Thank you all for being here on this eve of the New Year's Eve, the last Saturday Human Colony webinar of 2017. I think that's amazingly uh, a pinnacle <laughs> for, um, for all of us this 2017 year, and I feel as if I've come back home. Um, this is where, in, a, in a, a similar events just like this, where I began speaking light languages for the very first time. And I loved, the idea today that this channel panel was going on at the same time. Because every single, when I found Human Colony, I had already been listening and connecting with every single one of those channelers that's on that channel panel today. And I remember thinking back then, um, and I was, well, it's been, let's say maybe, maybe four or five years now since I think I, I started. I think I really woke up around 11, 11, <laughs> at 11, 11, 11. But um, 
I had already been familiar and had been watching and connecting with light languages and channeling. Um, and so my higher guides had brought me to my family, my, my tribe, if you will, by my vibe, because I was already, I guess, putting out what we would call that, that desire um, to find my galactic families, to know more about who I was, to connect to my, to my star families. I've always known in my heart of hearts that, that, they're, that we are connected, that they're, we are not the only beings um, alive <laughs> um, <clears throat> and, and out there in the world. So for me, this is like, it feels like coming home. Um, I remember being so nervous the first time I actually even came into a hangout or a webinar and being so excited about these languages. Um, when I first, I, I cut my teeth on Bashar. So I was, I was already excited about uh, sacred circuitry. Um, and that's actually, that's why I had to laugh about my journal here that I just poured coffee on because this has been like the book that I've written like, when I first found Bashar, I started writing all these notes. It was like I was possessed, obsessed with everything I was hearing was, was the first truth I think I had ever heard for me. It was the first thing that actually resonated with me. And, and the idea that, um, sorry, I wasn't on camera, was I? <laughs> um, the idea that we are connected to all things, that all things are connected to all things, that what we do affects everything. That and that and that includes the that includes how we're affected by and create and and we're how we're all created from sacred geometry, sacred circuitry. And one of the very first things I started doing in my book was writing down the sacred circuits and um that were from Sirius, and that was brought through Daryl Anka and Bashar. And so Daryl, Wendy Kennedy, um, Nora Harold, um, uh, all uh, Daniel Scranton, all of these um, channelers were feeding and activating something in me that was part of me all along, but waiting to be awakened up. And just like all of us, right? This is what we're doing here together is by gathering here, and sharing these ideas, processes, languages, we activate each other. And I want to thank all of you who I know through my, my own light language channel, Languages of Light. Um, that this kind of gathering is how that came to be. Um, and so whether it's repeating numbers, I'm an 1111 freak. As a matter of fact, anybody who knows me knows that. My birth path number is 11. But the point is, is when I was looking for, I was looking, I was, like so many of us, we felt so alone in the world because we knew we didn't think like everybody else. We knew that, that there was just something more, that we were connected to more. But we didn't believe the traditional beliefs like everyone else necessarily. We were sort of lost and now we're trying to find each other. And as we do this together, we're activating and we're finding our, our galactic families and we're activating the language when we speak these languages um and now mind you i had never spoken a galactic language in my life until the first time i was watching a bashar event and i remember there was a girl on there a younger girl um and she started speaking a language and it sounded almost like i don't know maybe mantis or insectoid or something like that and something happened something clicked literally and it was a click and it was kind of funny because it was a clicking kind of uh um if any it's really old if any of you guys have seen it but it was almost like a kind of a clicking kind of a language and i thought wow that's interesting and he didn't make too much of it she was in the audience asking him a question and and then i saw bridget nielsen later on in a bashar event who started talking about hybrid children but she wasn't the first there was actually one way back um uh, in a really old clip from like 1990 maybe really old maybe 1990s 80s even when when daryl first started channeling bashar and i remember her talking about being a hybrid mother and a hybrid and i was like i had never heard it before didn't know the term but all of a sudden I heard in my mind, I'm a hybrid mother. I have hybrid children. And I'm, I didn't even know what it was. I, I, 
And so we start to realize that all of these things throughout our life, and, and most of us, every one of us who have, have chosen to be here on earth, kind of, you know, we all chose a pretty crummy path because that's why we're here. We're the masters, we're the way showers, we're the teachers, the light, the light workers. So the 1111, back to that, when I first was looking for lots of things, pain relief, um, you know, had done the, you know, the pharmaceuticals um, and all of that, trying to find pain relief for several surgeries that were a result of just basically resistance in my body, because everything is, everything that we needs to be healed is basically resistance of some form. And most of it's <laughs> resistance to ourselves and our own self love our own connection to the divine and so i really i believe that that's why we all do this is just to remind each other of our connection to the divine and when i was a kid i remember my girlfriend she was very um into the church she was uh um her family was very you know uh, involved in in the catholic church and i remember one day i spent the night at her house and she and i actually used to have the secret language um we used to call it Chico at the time. <laughs> um, and people call it different things. Uh, how did it go? Like, um, I'm going to say, my name is Wendy. Mitigai, mitigay, mitigiz, would again, didigi. So, and I, a lot of people know that some people call it gibberish. But anyway, so my sister and I, I mean, my girlfriend and I, she and I had this secret language and she taught it to me. And so there we have the first spark of the idea of secret languages. And I've always wanted to travel the world and learn languages from all over the world. And so, there was a part of me that really knew like I was like this galactic ambassador. Like I like to travel into different places and speak languages and greet and meet people and, and just um, travel the stars, you know, grew up on Star Trek and Star Wars. And I believed in aliens, always, always believed in aliens, could not believe anybody who didn't <laughs> believe in aliens. I was like, how could you really believe we're alone here? Really? You know? So all of this was sparking me and, and you know, and activating me and, and um, every little bit of it. And then I would hear, um, and then I stumbled across like um, Vanessa Lamorte and I, she started speaking these wonderful, beautiful languages and something happened to me. I like started to cry. I started to get really emotional. I st things started happening to me. I started hearing met more. I started to actually hear messages. I started to get like, in more i've always been intuitive my family's always thought i was psychic I, my aunt was a psychic my aunt was a medium she was a, a tarot card reader she was a channel um she she channeled um uh, my mom's brother who had passed at a, a very young age so i was already sort of you know all of this was amazing to me i loved anything to do with magic i had to show you guys my hand so when I was at Universal Studios many, many, many years ago, I had to buy this hat. So if anybody remembers Casper and Wendy, the the, <laughs> the friendly ghost. So I had a laugh about this. I have this hanging up here. I've only worn it a couple times because it's kind of goofy, but it's got Wendy on the back. But I had to laugh this morning because of the magic and how <laughs> that's how I feel. Like we're all just spreading magic here, our magic fairy dust. And I've always believed in fairies and elves and um you know nature you couldn't keep me out of nature i didn't want to be in the schoolroom. i wanted to be outside i wanted to be on the grass i wanted to be playing outside but i was also painfully shy extremely painfully shy and very much alone because i realized at a very young age i didn't think like everybody else and i didn't even think like adults and when i would ask adults questions they would say I don't know how to answer your question. And even my mom would say, you're an old soul. You know, I don't know how to answer your questions. You know, you need to go to school. And then I would go to school and pose these questions to the teachers and it'd be like, they were just like so blown away that it was, so, you know, we feel a little alone because we think a different way. And we're told that, you know, this is the mold and, and, you know, and I'm, I'm showing my age here, but I grew up in the sixties and the seventies and the eighties and the nineties. So I was bringing all this garbage and heavy parental belief systems. And, and I grew up in a, a very dysfunctional home, you know, the, the alcoholism and I was the oldest and I was the mom, you know, at, at, you know, nine years old and having to do it all. And, and so I was very, I felt very alone, very, very alone and um, was inside myself. And, and 
anytime I trusted an adult, um, they would say, well, you know, what's wrong? It seems like you have problems at home or things aren't quite right or you're sad. Um, I, it, I, if I would, if I would confide in them, the first thing that would happen was, is they would go right to my mom and say, well, you know, your daughter says that you have a drinking problem and, you know, and so then of course we all know what, we all know what that, ha what happens then. So, you know, there was no outlet until I met my girlfriend who taught me the secret language. And then she came home one day and, um, was telling me about the the twelve step program and how her parents were in it and how um, Alati might help me and because up until that point I really didn't like to be touched or hugged or I wasn't I wasn't touchy feely um, so I know I keep kind of going back and forth but I hope you can follow the threads here because it really shows how everything that we have chosen in our path is connected to what we've decided to do today. And it's part of your masterclass, my masterclass, our masterclass together, so that when we came together today in this energy, we could be here today together, um, bringing all of these parts of ourselves, you know, to, and these experiences together. And so part of that is sharing our processes. And so for me, as I was going through all of this, I started to understand, like now, a few years ago, how all of those little things played a part in what I was supposed to do today. And it, it, once you begin to accept it and become and embrace who you really are and why you chose what you chose, um, there becomes this less idea of needing to be healed because you understand there's nothing wrong with you. You, we we called it, well, I have all this baggage and I have all this healing and all this dysfunctional stuff. You know, we all did. That's why we came here on earth. Every single person that's breathing on this earth came to do this hard job. And, you know, once I started listening to the idea that, you know, Seth, the very first words I heard were, you create your own reality. For the first time, that was the only thing that really made any sense to me because the whole thing of you know, your life happens to you and there's this God that dictates what you do and the path is laid out for you already. And, you know, all of that just didn't like sit with me. It just didn't feel right. And nobody could address my questions about the parts of our history that was left out. Nobody could answer my questions about well, what do you think about aliens and what about the UFOs and why isn't this talked about why is it hidden you know and um then the whole thing you know roswell and all of it it just i all I, it was like i instinctively and innately knew all along that all of it was just a bunch of cover-ups and lies and, and but i was never really into the ufo conspiracy theory stuff at all actually not at all i still am not um because i always just believed it was true and so there was really no reason for me to go into the conspiracy theory because I already knew it was real and I already knew it was being covered up. So for me, it was just already kind of, yeah, I know that's what's happening. And um, then I started to understand the connection between all of the other aspects of nature and healing and how I always wanted to be in nature, how I needed to be in nature in order to deal with the shit that was going on in my life that I, if I couldn't go out and be with the grass and the trees and the sun, I felt completely alone and disconnected because I had no humans I could really connect with. So then back to my girlfriend, she's teaching me. And, and at this time I'm 12. Now I met my girlfriend when I was 12 and she teaches me this, this language. And then she comes one day and she says, Oh, my parents went, we went to this new church and it was, um, I forget what religion or whatever. I grew up Lutheran, but not really. I just, my mom was Lutheran and my dad, um, but I, I kind of tried everything. I tried, let's see, I, I was baptized Lutheran, but I was, I was a baby, so I didn't know. Um, and then um, I was confirmed Methodist. I, went, I was married in the Catholic church. I, I tried the Christian church. So I tried everything, trying to, to fill this hole, this cap, this emptiness that I couldn't fill. I couldn't figure out what was missing. Why was I, and if, you know, and I, I mean, I was unhappy because of the stuff with the childhood stuff, but, you know, and, and 
and and that didn't end until I left and moved and got married and you know uh, left high school and I mean that that went on actually on and off pretty much throughout my entire uh, adult life even after I had children and so um, and my children are are I have two boys are grown grown men gone um, for a long long time so um, so I've been around the block a few times I've I've tried you know um, and then and then the whole medical thing and and the, the the pharmaceuticals and trying to find natural healing and I've always was always one of those kind of hippie kind of people that like I had both of my kids with no drugs and so it was like I wanted to be as natural as I could and I couldn't really understand why people would want to alter their mental state you know but I understood that later but um because it, it, all resistance whether it's physical, mental, spiritual, anything that we feel negative about ourselves is because we're lacking the self-love, this piece of self-love um, within ourselves, this connection, this lack, this connection to the divine that we seem to be missing. And so when she, so my girlfriend came home that day and, and um, she said, I went to this church and they were speaking in tongues. Now that was the very first time, and I'm sure we've all heard that term by now, but that was the first time I, that I had ever heard that term. Now remember I was maybe 12 at the time. So, and it's sort of, it was just one of those things you talk in the back of your mind, right? So as I started waking up, I started to, re I started to connect the dots to all of these things and all these things in my life and the things that I was interested. I was also, in choir all my life. I um, was a writer. I have volumes. As a matter of fact, I spilled my coffee, but I have stacks of all my journals right here, like stacks and stacks of them because I've been writing journals for years. But mo but on um, what I wanted to do and in, in, incorporate into this, that channeling and light languages and automatic writing, one, that was one of the first ways. It was one of the first doors writing, writing and automatic writing and writing um, poetry, song lyrics trying to express who I was, but I was trying to do it in a way where the world wouldn't really know who, what I was saying. I was, you know, speaking in metaphors because that's, you know, poetry is speaking in metaphors. So I was really trying to figure out, uh, trying to express myself without hurting anyone's feelings. You know what I mean? So you do it in poetry. And so I was also would write in my journals, but I would write in pencil it's so weird how we think because I, did, I wanted to make sure I could erase in case I wrote something that somebody might read that might hurt their feelings. Isn't that crazy? So, so I would erase it, you know, um, but now I write in big, bold pen and I don't, you know, I'm just, that's so automatic writing and, and keeping track of our dreams. I started tracking my dreams. I started getting interested in this, you know, really interested in astrology and the stars and dream journaling. Um, and I started to realize as I was dreaming and these messages that were coming through in my dreams were connecting me to other realms. And I started to, as I started to buy these dream journals and, and start reading about dreams, I started to understand that these weren't really dreams at all. These were experiences that I was having on other realms because I was starting to visit them during the day <laughs> as I started waking up. And, um, and I was still working at the time. And so I was in the work world, very unhappy for many, many years. And as a result of that resistance, I created six shoulder surgeries. And so I was looking for pain relief and, and um, having been through the whole medical system for, for, for a good, gosh, I don't know. I would say probably at least 15 years. Um, and 10 of it was surgery after surgery after recovery after surgery. So um, I, was, I was just desperate in every way possible. I, I just, I didn't know who I was. I didn't know what I wanted. I didn't know, I, wa I wanted to be happy with what I had. I had a beautiful home. I had beautiful children. They were wonderful. Never gave me a problem. I was so blessed. Um, but there was something missing. I did, I, and I had, and I, I mean, and I did it all. I was the band mom, this mom, that mom, the, you know, the, the baseball, the football, the, 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 um, you know, all of it. And I had the, the house and the, the flower garden and friends and family and did, and I did everything. I was 
everything because I was grabbing all of these ideals of what the 50s and 60s and 70s and 80s and all of that crap that was told me who I should be was finally weighing and weighing and weighing. And so when the light languages came about, I started to feel something happen in me that I didn't understand. And when I found Human Colony and I had already been involved with all these channelers, I was ready and awakened to, to this information. So when I first came in, when I, when I first found Human Colony, it's like one of those things where you're like, how did that happen? And it was through a channeler who then I found Jim, you know, and then I found Human Colony. And then I saw that they were starting to do light language events and hangouts and Sabrina was doing light language gyms at the time. And so there were, and then all of a sudden, all these people started speaking light languages in, in these hangouts. And I got so excited. And then I actually started channeling on my own in private before I even told anybody what was happening. It was happening in the shower. It was happening during the day. I would get, I would burst into tears. I would feel something happening in my heart chakra. And I didn't even know what, really understand what the heart chakra was then either. <laughs> um, not really. I didn't really understand all of that stuff, the connections and the heart chakras and how all of this was really connected. I was just starting to understand it. So when I, she asked me when Sabrina, they were speaking in languages and we we're talking about all of these connections. And then I started to understand when I found the group and then they were talking about meeting your star families. And I didn't even understand what the colonies were or anything like that. But it was what I knew was it was something I was doing. I was already doing it and I was just being reminded or awakened or introduced to the idea that. 1111. I just saw somebody posted 1111. Um, <laughs> so I was, I was already wanting this connection. I was so excited and my excitement, I was exuberant. <laughs> I was finally so excited to find all of this, that when I finally started getting in these hangouts from being this really shy, inverted, quiet person, I became, <laughs> I was like, like I lit up like a Christmas tree <laughs> and here you have it today. Like I am now just blah, 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 blah. Now I will say when I was doing the, the, the 12 step thing we did, there was a time when my mom and I, she was AA, I was Alateen Al-Anon and she and I would speak in open meetings on Saturday nights to groups and groups of people. And I know now that that was also part of, I was, I think I was channeling none to be honest with you because when I, I was terrified to get up there because I was so shy. But once I got up there, I start, when I started speaking from my heart, I understood that there were people out there who needed to hear how we found peace in this chaos of dysfunction. And how could two people, a mother and a daughter, stand up there and tell their stories from a different perspective with unconditional love? Because let me tell you, there was a time when I hated her and I mean, hated her and my whole child, I blamed her for everything. My whole childhood ruined it, you know, everything. And it's interesting because last, um, was it the last, um, webinar with Karen Newman and she was kind of taking us back to this healing point of theos and this idea of going back to finding where that those, those pieces that are really haunting us and opening up that lotus flower within us and saying, it's not about necessarily the shadow, but it's about opening to the light. And so I ask every day, I'm not afraid anymore. I ask every day, show me what it is that I need to see to be the, uh, to be this better, brighter, clearer human being. Um, how can I improve my connection to source energy and, and therefore emit a higher light and even if I never did this work another day, it wouldn't matter because that's what really matters. And that's what we all need to understand. You are amazing just walking and breathing who you are. And 
these light languages for some reason were able to help me see that and I don't even understand how but I do know that the idea of sacred geometry sacred circuitry then I then I, I just thought of Brad Johnson Brad Johnson who channels this, you know from uh, Adronis from Sirius you know I got really got into the sacred circuitry and it started to and these light codes and light code attunements if you will and I started to start drawing volumes that's what I want to show you guys too um and I'm sure you've seen it on my my channel but um and when yeah go ahead um so michelle wanted to uh her she has her download but um if she, if she could get an activation if we could do like an activation oh for yeah let's do that yeah i so think we should do that yeah and then and also like, to show you guys too yeah just do this stuff if it's coming to you <laughs> No, go ahead, honey. Okay, and then I was going to say, also, we had a question from a, a previous group um, for the chat yeah. today about um, if it's possible that they can only speak one one galactic language or one type of light language, or if, because we're connected to so many various galactic groups, if they can speak more than one galactic language or more than one light language. And we should probably explain how the light language and galactic language kind of come together as one. Yeah. Okay, that's interesting too because then, hi Sabrina, I see she jumped, she jumped in. Um, so, you know, when Can I, I jump in, was <laughs> <laughs> I say when I first started speaking it though, they, it was almost like they would tell me, I could hear, like they would say, yeah, I could hear like or see Pleiadian, or I would see or, or hear Arcturian or Lyran in my in my mind. So, the idea is that we are multi-dimensional beings right so uh, there are so many fractals of us there's there's an arturian part of us if, if this is part of your journey there's an arturian part of us a pleiadian part of us a lyran part of us a syrian part of us when we get to experience by perspective a piece of these perspectives and so it would stand to reason that we would be um be able to speak a variety of languages at any given time and actually when i had my first private session with jim that was one of the things that they that um i believe it was takur and shell from the shikani said to me because i'm very connected to the shikani i have shikani dna and arturian and pleiadian um so yes you can absolutely connect to multiple languages and that's what happened to many of us we just started people would start coming into the hangouts and all of a sudden we were speaking all these languages. Now I'll be honest with you. There's sometimes when, when the emissaries of the light collective first came to me and I started making the videos, one of the first things they said to me was, you know, you speak you, because my desire was to learn and speak so many languages, I wanted to connect with so many different kinds of collectives. Some people, you know, connect their frequencies more to individuals, some is collective, some's all of the above. So I was feeling like angelic energy. Then it would be uh, this star system, that star system. Then it would feel like there were days when I would hear Mother Mary would come to me and she'd say, hello, this is Mother Mary. And it was as if she wrapped her hands right around my heart and I would start to just cry. Um, the, very, the Elohim were the very first that came to me and they said loud and clear, we are the Elohim. And um, so the emissaries, the light collective are literally representations of all of that. Lyran, Arturian, Syrian, Pleiadian, and there are star systems, you guys, that we don't even, we think we know, we don't know. I mean, and then if you go even higher, you know, you're talking about the languages of source itself. And that surpasses, I mean, we're talking from the oversouls. We're talking pure light code information that comes from the very beginning of source of god of you know you're talking you know the angels the the el the elohim the, the creators of all you know and and so we cannot we are we as humans are not satisfied unless we can label unless we can identify and this is part of what the light languages is teaching us, to be honest. The, the funny part, the paradox about this is that the light languages is teaching us we need to let go of the label of labeling the light language. Because 
we're still trying to fit it in a box. We're trying to label ourselves. We're trying to fit ourselves in a box. And what they're trying to say is, yes, the answer is yes. The answer is yes to that and that and that because you are that in that moment. And you get to experience that connection with that part of your family or perhaps your Pleiadian self, perhaps your Lyran self, perhaps that's you talking to you. That's another fractal of you, even though it's another being altogether. They have another being, another life, family, a planet, a lifestyle. Um, we're teaching and we're learning at the same time. Does that answer the question, do you think? I think so. And somebody else wanted to join in. I'm not sure who it was. But oh, yeah. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to cut you off. I just wanted to kind of finish that thought. I don't know if it was JD or who, who it was. Yeah, I... Uh... I was listening to what Wendy was saying, and it was basically what I would express myself if I. So thank you, Wendy, for that. And uh, hi, Johanna. It's good to see you. Thanks for being here. Yeah, yeah thank you. Uh, so I would just uh, continue on that idea of uh, of language that that expression of yours. Right now, I'm an, I am expressing myself in a language which is the language that I always have speaking and spoken, which is all the languages that includes the one language, which is the expression. So we come back to sound and we come back to the source, which is the moment and which is you right now expressing yourself. So how do you feel? How does it feel to express the things that you want to express, the feelings that you have inside of you that wants to come out, that wants to be expressed? How do they sound when you let them go to be expressed without thinking about how will I express this? I will just start expressing this that I feel. And then you will start discover that what Wendy was uh, saying, that there is only one language, you come back to yourself and your expression. So all these categories of different sources of where this language comes from, yes, it's a thought, it's an idea that you have about where does it come from and you will find where does it come from within yourself because there is truly where it always was. So you're finding yourself over and over again. JD, stop, stop your TV yep. because it's a bit uh, distracting. Thank you, JD. And yes, you're absolutely right. That is exactly the, the biggest message I've been receiving lately. And, that's a, and, and actually, I'm just like everyone else. I wanted to know what I'm saying. I want to know who it is. I want to know what energy is behind it. But if you ask, you'll hear it you'll hear the message and you'll hear the answer. What we want is validation. As humans, we want validation so we can categorize it. We want validation so we can say, I am this. I talk to um, this being or this entity or this um, idea, but we're, the idea of 1111 and sacred geometry and numerology, and I really believe this idea of 2018 of being the 11 year, this is, this is it. You know, we talk about 1111. That's how I found when I first searched on 1111 online because I was so desperate for everything. Um, the first thing I read was I found on was you are a light worker. And as I'm reading this thing about 1111 and you are a light worker, every sing I just burst into tears. That was how I found all the channelers, how I came, you know, how I found Human County. So everything that excites you, whether it's the written codes, these light code attunements, and I, and I do these for people in private sessions, and I'll tell you what, they're extremely activating, and I've been activated just by looking at other people's. And all of you guys who, you know, hang out on Facebook, look at all those groups now of the light languages and people doing asemic writing and um, all these light language, written light language groups, we're all activating each other. And that's when I first started seeing these sacred circuits from Bashar, I knew right away I was being activated um, with the, my Syrian self, if you will. Um, so yes, the answer is all, you are all of, the, all of those. We can speak multiple languages, but you know what? Some people, if it's in your path or your, your excitement 
to only do one language, to not do them at all, to, you know, we, that's another thing. We've got to stop labeling what we think channeling actually is because every moment that you're receiving, that you allow yourself intentional meditation time, anytime that you allow yourself to take your mind, because remember you created your mind and you have multiple minds. You have an infinite timeless number of minds because you, the one being created many, many beings. Um, so you have access to all of these different minds all at one time. And yet it takes setting aside this mind to say, I consciousness would like you 3d ego mind. If you want to call it ego, I really don't like that word, but, um, um, I like to look at it as putting the mind in the passenger seat and allowing my consciousness to take the driver's seat and then allowing the information to come through and letting the mind, it's like, let them sit in the car and watch the scenery while I access, you know, the higher consciousness and then let the mind kind of come back in and assimilate what is, you know, what we got downloaded kind of a thing, if that sort of makes any sense. Um, they're showing me that it's really supposed to be all encompassing. Yeah, when we're when we're invited to open our heart chakra, which is this is exactly part of what the light language is do for us when we call it healing we're calling healing is nothing more than raising our frequency to become the vibration of this being who is no longer in resistance so it's not necessarily about healing the physical body necessarily but we have to equate it that way because we're 3d people and we we need to think of it that way but if you can look at it as like like if you want to call you know jesus the healer the way he saw it he wasn't healing the body. He was seeing that individual, that energy entity in its perfect state. That's what healers do. Um, I found it interesting too, how Reiki, as I started getting in, interested in all this stuff and galactic Reiki and finding out what we're doing on the colonies. And um, I started to understand how Reiki and the languages work together, how they can alchemize to raise our frequency. Which actually activates our different chakras, and it allows us to open up. You know how each chakra has certain things that are associated with it, and then when we need, when we have a resistance in each one of, in any one of these particular areas, we call it you know clearing our chakras or aligning our chakras, um, being in nature, exposing ourselves to colorful food, pure water, pure food, non chemicals you know, staying organic, um, being in nature, breathing the air, blessing the water, blessing the water we drink. Um, all of this is stimulating and activating. That's why you'll see like me, I've done a complete about face with my diet. I, and it's not even that I've done it like, Oh, I'm going to do this. I'm going to be this or be that and label it. This is where we're asked to let go of the labels. Stop labeling what you're doing, what you're eating, what you're guided to, the what, the why, the how, why am I doing this, who is this, and just let it be and embrace it. That's when you start to actually open it up. Um, don't ask yourself why you're craving that. Just eat it. <laughs> Go ahead. Okay. We have questions from um, Awa first and then Ella or Elle. Go ahead, Awa. Hi, um, Eva. Um, I have a question. Oh, wait a second. Yeah, yeah, you can hear me. I have yeah. a question because... Um, I seem to talk a lot of gibberish to myself and it's been uh, many years of speaking gibberish. But now since I discovered that um, I'm Fendorian and there are all these languages, I started wondering, am I speaking gibberish for just the fact of this because I didn't grow up? Or am I speaking some galactic languages? And honestly, I have no clue. I now personally you know. don't think there's anything. I don't think there's anything such as gibberish. I think it's exactly. Hard. And now that you know, see, and this is where they laugh at us all the time because we're so busy wanting validation. They're like, the, the answer's in your question. So yes, absolutely. You are definitely, if you know you're Fendorian, you're, you feel Fendorian, you're getting that energy, 
that's your Fendorian family self star family going, Hey, you're in our frequency. Hey, nice to see you. <laughs> did did you like, want to share a bit yeah, of it with please, us? I was just going to ask you, would you please, would you no, like no, to? No, no, I don't. I'm a little shy. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> you know, we lost okay, the okay. is, is, is just comes up, but I always think, okay, what are you, silly again? And it just flows. <laughs> But it's, we all, it's more like entertainment for me at this We point. all like that. And you know, that I have to tell you guys was one of the benefits of being in the human colony hangouts too, was because Jim is so awesome when it comes to um, translate. And I can translate or interpret to a degree what some of what people are saying, you know, just by information I'm receiving. But that excited me more than anything when we would be in a hangout and we would be doing our blessings and jim would translate what we said and i'd be like you know we're just like wow that's what we said and we're just like dang that's so cool you know you should realize you really are receiving that information and so we're also Who's, can, you guys gotta mute who's ever got their mic oh, yeah. you guys gotta mute it you can you can mute him too, I think, hon. Thank you. Okay. Oh, she, there she is. I wasn't sure if it was if it was. Siato semi ikiato e bashano iwa kiesa ta sidi and a kiesa to sopalia so kukrashana iwa e na kieta sopalaha no kwa. You know, so and in that, and one of the things that they want to explain to you about light languages, um, say for example, you hear a tone, um, like our like Sarah, our friend Sarah, she she did half our toning. And now if you can sit and have it listen to a tone and then have that translated, you would understand that there are volumes of information just in a tone, in a syllable. So when we're speaking a light language, you know, you're not actually necessarily saying a string of words necessarily. Now you can be, um, but the idea is that there's so many levels of chakra healing, activating DNA um, empowerment happening, your Fandorian self, your Arcturian self, all of it. It's almost as if you can, if you can look at it as brain synapses that have been sleeping for a long time that are just being awakened and then they get triggered by stuff. You know, just like we get triggered by crap from our past, <laughs> um, you know, these things are triggering our light bodies, the, the galactic bodies that we are. Um, and remember, you know, we're so awesome that we came here. Imagine how awesome your body is that it runs pretty much without you actually thinking about it at all, right? I mean, you really don't have to think about its operation. So we can equate that to even our UFO friends, our ET friends, where they, you know, they have a vessel, which as soon as they walk into it, it becomes part of them. You know, Bashar's little, his little vessel is called Nexus. That's its name. And but yet, you know, it's it, he's part of it. It's part of him. They speak to each other. They tele they're telepathically connected. Well, I guess if you think about it, we're telepathically connected to our bodies. You can talk to the water in your cells. You can talk to your cells. You can talk to. That's actually how I started doing all this too. Is I started talking to my shoulder, and I started telling. I started in meditation. I started asking my stem cells to go visit my shoulder in meditation. And I would literally look at it like little Pac-Man. That's dating me. Um, <laughs> I would literally look at little, little Pac-Man, like fusing my shoulder together and healing it. Now, but that was before I understood vibration and frequency. I was literally like trying to heal the thing. But what I didn't realize was what was happening. I was healing myself spiritually and emotionally which was, that was truly raising my vibration to heal me. And, to, and really, I suffer very little physical pain anymore as, you know, after all that. Um, and it was constant. I'm talking constant, everyday, excruciating pain. Every day of my life for more than 20 years. So um, I can honestly say today that unless I, you know, do something weird or, you know, um, you know, and I find I overdo it with the technology. You know, I think we all do the, you know, the phones and the, the so we're asked part of light languages to take us out of that 3D place and bring us back into oneness with ourselves where we remember we're loved and connected and supported. It brings us back inside and, and, and helps us focus on our heart center because this is where 
until we as a human collective consciousness can connect to each other on a heart-centered basis, we cannot possibly connect with them here physically. Wendy? Yeah, go ahead. I was just going to say, I know you're going to ask me a question. <laughs> I just, um, I do my so we want to do, um, uh, is it L? L has a question and then we yeah, want to do, ahead, we want to do an activation for everyone. Michelle, that was yes. like the first thing. So we, we should do that too. No, so that's I didn't, kind of uh, yeah, that's what they were kind of doing too, is they were sort of helping to activate everybody and get them into the mode. So hi, Ellie. Hi, it's another question. I just wanted to jump in and say I love you. I love you all, but I love you, Wendy, a lot. So, no so to horita hasha na katara ni tu puto rono kuto ni kata para na kuto to. Ri sa hani ni kata poro tu hu soni matika na ri hi kuto roho monto esorika pati ni ka nuho hu tu kuho. Ellie and I, we've uh, known each other in Human Colony for a long time. She was one of the very first people that I met in Human Colony, along with um, Sabrina and, and several others. And um, we work together on a lot of the colonies. Um, she and I work with the hybrid children a lot. Um, Ellie's uh, and she does a lot with the health colony, the healing colony. So it would only stand to reason that she and I, in my own process of wanting healing, um, that she and I would come together. And she and I, I know we work together. Even right now, as we, as I talk about it, Ellie, I'm starting to, my heart chakra is opening. I start to feel what our work together on the colonies, and I start to become very emotional. <laughs> um, yes. <laughs> you know what I mean? I just talking about it because I can feel. And there are mornings when I wake up and I can feel you guys. It's like, I'll wake up and go, oh, I was working with so-and-so. I was on, we were doing this work. Or, or I'll say, what was I doing and who was I with? Because I'm feeling something I don't really understand. And they'll, and all of a sudden they'll say, you were working with Ellie. Or you were working with the Yael. Or you were working on the uh, tectonic plates. Or you were... Like one day I woke up recently and I had my hand on the on a piece of stone and I was we were we were learning together on the colonies how to identify I think or something the elements within a stone and be able to communicate with them and, and how to how to code them how to code yes, them in order to, to save information in them yep See, and now this is the kind of thing that I don't even know how sometimes to even articulate that in a in a video or. But these are the things that we experience once we start to activate ourselves and get together. So sometimes all it takes is a message that you send somebody like in a Facebook or private message, and it opens up like a whole memory. So even as we speak right now, because everything is now, I know that there is that version of, of you and I right now that are out, we're there now working. Yeah, it's be lucky. Yes. So even though we can't three-dimensionally understand how all this is happening, it is happening. And we're trying so hard to wrap our 3D mind around it. And the light languages help us, one, to not only, we lose the need to wrap our 3D Maya around, around it to begin with, but it also activates us to be able to engage and process information on a higher level, to receive, like a, it's almost like it broadens your antenna. It allows you to see visions of the people that you hang around with, that, and it, it increases your synchronicity, it increases your... Um, awareness that you stay in the here and now that that's where your power is because the past and the future only creates worry and and resist you know resistance and and disease is is from dis-ease is from resistance so it's it's everything so that and, you know and that's why there's you know there's there's colonies for each thing because you know we're we're all doing this together and we're working behind the scenes in television radio um on the internet healing in the then we get into the pyramid idea so then we you know we've got the pyramid energy we've got reiki we've got galactic reiki um 
we're starting to engage and alchemize all these healing modalities. And I know for sure that light languages is as we incorporate light languages into each of these healing modalities, we're expanding and ascending and able to, we're increasing our ability to connect and channel. And also, but the most important thing is to find our self love. You know, I, it's almost like it doesn't matter. It's like all the other stuff is almost like all falls into place once we find that. Once we let go. Yes, and open up and allow this to, just allow it. Yeah, tell us something, yeah. Nothing is impossible. We just have to let go. Exactly. We're just here. Isn't that funny how they keep saying that too? And we've been hearing that since even, you know, all this, the, the written, <laughs> you know, let go, surrender, live and let live, let go and let God, you know, all the things that we learned <laughs> in the program too, you know, even you know, yeah. they, they, they have all their own sayings, you know. <laughs> go, go run in the forest naked, <laughs> just let go. <laughs> um, and, and, you know, the, and one of the things that we learn and that we're told over and over, but we've known this since we were kids, is be outside play outside and I don't care what entity anybody channels and Jim every every single energy that comes through tells us the same message right get outside in nature spend time um, with the elements connecting to your heart center uh, giving yourself quiet time eating good food drinking clean water um, yet we dismiss we dismiss the first you know this is what's the tricky part about this whole thing is because we've been led to believe that we need all this stuff and junk and whatever it is, chemicals, pharmaceuticals, products, packaged foods, whatever it is, we've been told all these years that this is what you need to whatever, um, be happy. And yet one, what, what we didn't realize is we need to clear all of that away in order to be clear. And uh, trying to go somewhere with, with that thought. Um, that, uh, the family does not uh, allow you to do this because they're not thinking the same way. So the, your surrounding is not helping you do it. But it you, is. Have be, you have to be overwhelmed, overcoming this by just uh, doing what you want to do. Never I, mind. I don't, I don't make the same food. I don't make the same food for him as I do for me because I realized that, that it, yeah, maybe it's a little bit more trouble, but there was so much resistance in me in conforming that I physically, the resistance was greater than continuing the behavior. That's what happens to us. We start to understand that when we continue illogical behavior, it becomes more painful to continue the illogical behavior than it does to become ourselves because our heart is screaming to be authentic and be ourselves and not have to say, I'm not eating that. You can eat that and I'll even make it for you if I'm a nice guy, but <laughs> I'm not going to eat it. And I'm not going to apologize for not eating it either. And this is where we are with light languages. This is where we are with channeling. I'm not going to apologize anymore. I got to tell you guys something. I came out this weekend on Christmas to, <laughs> to someone in my family who she was already, she knew I did Oracle cards and I've actually showed her a bunch of my star languages, you know, that I've, the, the glyphs and things that I've written over the years. And, um, and uh, so I was, I've been showing her this stuff and I think she's been kind of getting activated and she started buying Oracle cards, started doing her own readings. And then he said something like, Oh, did you know that so-and-so used to go, to this place where they would speak in tongues and i said and it was like it was like i could hear my spirit guides telling me here's your chance to be authentic a little bit more than you were yesterday and i said well guys i have something to tell you i can do that too and i said i don't call it speaking in tongues necessarily i said but i can do that too and he was just like oh okay like it was no big deal and her eyes got really big and she's like wow that's really cool and she's like well how do you know who you're talking to or what they're saying or how did she say that? And I, how do you know, understand what they're saying? And I said, to try to keep it simple, I said to her without really getting into it, I said, your heart knows. 
And so she was doing an Oracle card reading for herself with my cards. And she was, she was feeling that she said, I can feel, she says, I can feel them here. I can feel them here with me. And she says, and then she went to the washroom and she came back and she said, I just saw an entity downstairs. <laughs> and I said, Oh, you did. <laughs> and she's like, yeah, I just saw an entity downstairs. I'm like, you did. So that I told her about the light languages. It was really funny how the whole thing happened. And so, um, and then I said, your heart knows. And as she's doing her reading, I started, I said, I have a blessing for you. Would you like to hear it? And she said, yes. And I, so I started speaking a light language. It wasn't within three seconds and she burst into tears and she's, she was like, like, what just happened to me? I said, see, your heart knows, right? Your heart knows. And she just was shaking her head, bawling. So how do you explain that? So for me, that was really great because not only did she get like on her path, she was activated, but I was also, oh, I actually jumped another hurdle for me and became more authentic with my own family. Um, so, cause there's still a lot of my family in my family that doesn't even know that I do this, that I'm on YouTube. They know, but they don't really look, you know, I'm like, yeah, I got a YouTube channel and they're like, oh, okay, that's nice. But they've never actually watched it. So I thought that was kind of interesting. So I wanted to share that with anybody. I think somebody out there needed to hear that so that they could feel a little bit more comfortable with um, jumping out of their own labels. Yes. Excellent. And, and I have something to add as well. Um, so for, let me just click on this. Okay. So for those of you who um, either haven't started yet or are starting or have your download for light languages and don't really know how to proceed, this is a really great way to do it. If you can just calm yourself, um, meditate, and then just start tapping and go da, 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 da. And then if you can just let go, all of a sudden you'll be surprised what you're speaking. So da ashanakita unutubi ashanatita. And if you keep practicing and do it in the shower or do it when nobody's around, before you know it, if you can just let go, you will be speaking all sorts of light language. And that's exactly what some of the things that we do in like the private sessions. I mean, we start with the basics, you know, ah, e, I, o, u. it's about becoming comfortable with your own vibration, your own voice. People hate listening to themselves. Unless you're really good at it and stuff, I don't care. Every person says, I hate seeing myself on camera and I hate the way I sound. And so that resistance right off the bat keeps us, our, it, it keeps our throat chakra so closed that we can't let anything out. Because if you notice when you have an emotion that you can't let out, don't you notice that when you go into cry, it gets stuck in your throat? When you can't speak your truth, it gets stuck in your throat, right? When you want to cry, it gets stuck in your throat. It gets stuck between your solar plexus and your throat chakra because you can't, you can't let it out, right? So this is what happens with light languages and our channeling abilities. Every single person on the planet, you, me, everybody, is capable of channeling. It's in your DNA. It's part of you. It's who you are. Nobody is not capable of it. It just all depends on what you want. What you want to do is a part of your path. So yes, the beginning is to just let yourself go. And, and as Alicia said, don't be afraid to let your, your heart shut that talk, you know, um, and let go of the judgment. Every person I say says, well, it sounds like gibberish or I don't, I'm afraid of what I'm saying. Or I, I, as long as you have the intention of only the most highest um, love and light is allowed through that all doors are closed to anything that is of a lower vibration that I am of, I am being of the highest light and love that I open my heart chakra to my guides, my higher self, my, I open my heart and, and my solar plexus, my sun inside myself. And I allow my crown chakra to open my third eye to open. And I intentionally allow myself to connect with my star families. I will listen in the days to come for any synchronicities, any names, any ideas, any planetary systems, um, any information, any written words. When we talk about automatic writing, it doesn't need to be sentences. It doesn't need to be um, anything elaborate. I began many of my books that I have here, um, I wrote. I began when I found Abraham Hicks too. And she would talking about, you know, rockets of desire and all that. I just started, I would write words, just words about how I felt or I, whatever word came to my head. And before I knew it, I was actually channeling information. And then they would tell me, 
this is Sentia from Sirius. This is so and so. This is so and so. Um, and so the information comes through, but it begins with breath. It begins with being in the here and now. It begins with the intention of being calm and inviting in this, this idea of wanting to connect. Now, mind you, this the idea that you're here. You've already sent that out to the universe. By say, just, just by you in, in being in, excited about this, you've already told the universe by your vibration, I want more of this. This excites me. And then you're going to start to see the synchronicities of meeting people. Um, they're going to come into your life, or you're going to see a YouTube channel or something on Facebook or whatever that's going to, that's going to say, I feel the connection. I feel my family. And really allow it to take you on that galactic journey. Spend time learning the chakras and what each of the red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet, crystal, pink, learn what they mean and identify with these areas. And as you identify with what vibrates in these frequencies, you begin to start becoming aware in your meditation of where you feel that resistance in that part of your body and your guides are showing you even by what color you want to choose to wear in the morning it's going to show you what it is that you need to pay attention to to open yourself up to heal that wound if you want to call it healing to raise your vibration where that thing when you think about that thing that used to make you sick to your stomach where you can come to this place of acceptance of unconditional love of non-judgment to know that that's what happened. It's who I was. It's what I chose. It's what I did. I send it love. I send it unconditional kindness. Last week during that meditation with, with Karen and Theos, I was trying to dig and dig and find out where this one, this thing, this, this feeling kept coming from. And she said, you know, trace it back, trace it back, take it back. Try to ask yourself, and all of a sudden, I started seeing these images of when I was little. And I went back to when I was like six and five. And they said, no, not quite. Keep going. Keep going. It's a little bit further. It's a little bit further. And I started going back and I started, and I was like, okay, show me. And I'll tell you what, within a minute, I mean a second, like a, a, a flash of light, I hear inside of my heart center. And it said, you need to forgive yourself for feeling like you ruined your parents' life because you were born out of wedlock. Now, talk about, I was so, the emotions were so high, I could not even join the webinar because I realized for the first time how far back that went how far back that healing went to make me think that all my life I was carrying something about feeling responsible for ruining my parents' life for me being born out of wedlock. So that's how deep this crap can go, you guys. And But once you become okay with knowing what it is that's preventing you from becoming the best and highest version of you, there's nothing to be afraid of anymore. There's nothing, you, you're like, oh, okay. Wow, what a horrible burden for a human to carry. What a horrible burden for a child to carry. And my parents were divorced when I was six. So as a kid, of course you think, well, how could I, you know, am I responsible? So me being the firstborn and the oldest, well, that was a huge reckoning and revelation for me, a revealing to me about the center core of something that was hidden from me that seems so really doesn't seem obvious but 
wasn't obvious to me until last week. So this sharing of my process and these languages have helped me do that, to come out of my own shell and connect with all of these other parts of me and not worry about what I'm wearing, what I sound like, what I look like, um, you know, and that's not meaning that I don't care. It's meaning that I've become this, this if we can become this neutral place of non-judgment and unconditional love about ourselves. That's the beauty of having, you know, when Ranger came into my life, I've had animals all my life and have always believed I could connect to the animals. Um, I've always believed I could talk to the trees and the elves and the fairies and, um, and the clouds and the sun. I just always believed that. And so, but Ranger got me outside and he got me, he really brought me to a different level of unconditional love that I had never been at before because it, for a lot of reasons. And, and that day in, in January, <laughs> I started speaking galactic languages in August um, of 2014, I think it was. And it, it was in a hangout. Um, and, um, and I think it was in, and then it was in January, 2015 that I was out in the forest with Ranger and they said to me, you know, it's time. We are the emissaries of the light collective. Um, and there was a lot of stuff that went on, a, a conversation that went on. And I took out my phone. And from that moment, I had, I didn't know what I was doing technologically, but I, by the, by the end of the day, I had a YouTube channel. So if you know and let go of the fear, because I really had no idea. I didn't know anything about technology or the internet or social media or anything, really. And so I was terrified. I was shaking as I'm loading this video because I didn't know what I was doing, you know. And so I said, I, and I hear, I hear again in my head that do it scared, you know. Um, and and that was something that someone else shared with me once. That that's what their guide and sponsor told them, you know, do it scared, um, because you realize just like everything else we've done in life, you know, we all drove a car for the first time, you know, anything you've ever done that is old hat to you, you had to do it for the first time. And speaking collective languages is no different. So if there's no more immediate questions, what I would like to do is do um, what I'm going to, an, an, an actual, you know, an intentional activation where I'm going to bring everybody into their heart space. But I also would like, since we didn't begin, also we didn't begin um, with galactic blessings today, which we normally do, but I think, you know, it's just because our, we were really wanting to get started. So um, I would first like to uh, see if anybody has any questions at the moment. And I'd also like to see if anybody has any um, galactic blessings or languages right now that they would like to share um, as we kind of get into our heart centers and um, make sure that they're just to see if there's any any outstanding questions or like that they want to come out. I always have activations for all my family. Yes. Ruwaka sana katia sana yawaka sushuaka tia nawa. Hiara walaya kasata hiya kusunu yuwa kasata kaya na hu. Aki yo warana ya kasunu. Ya kasuna ta ki ya wasaka shi ya warana. Orro kushwa kata hani ya sawana ya. Hasu kashaki ya nuwa wana. Haya kasu wakari ya wana kasu ya wia katua. Ayu wakasi. Niya wa su shua, ar ko shua katu, ayaka sua yanu wakasa, pua, shia kurua, nayaka sua takahia, urro kurua rahia, nayasa kushukata, ayaka sua nawiya wa sanya kusuku, shayu wakariya nayawaka, Aniya saya, aku suwa niya kasiya wa nasuku. Shaiya wa naya wa hiya mu. Naya wa saka shakariya wu. Excellent. Thank you so much. Does anybody else have any blessings or activations they would like to share? Well, I will share one for you guys. I will do an activation. Wendy's going to do one as well. Um, she stepped up for a glass of water. Um, so my intention is to help you guys activate your um, light languages, your galactic languages, um, 
and get in touch with your galactic families if you haven't to start um, researching and recognizing who you are, that you are endless beings, that you are so amazing, um, you, you don't need labels. おりゃおまひあたなしゃきこうてやなはたぴょうおりゃおのとちはやこんやたしゃかだれおなたぼやなひかたおにゃたたおくぎあなたまはたあらあらやこのとぼやおでしゃなかもらはぼやなしくた Namaste. Does anybody else have anything they want to say? It doesn't have to be a galactic or a light language blessing. It could just be an English blessing. That would be great too. And is there any other questions that you guys had that we didn't get answered? Okay, guys. Are you back? Okay. I am back. All right. There we go. So I was oh, I was going to say um you know last night I had I had the privilege of meeting this wonderful woman who had messaged me with some questions about um her light language that she had been hearing in her mind but she wasn't really sure what was going on. And she did such a good job of writing it phonetically that I was able to read it in the galactic language and send her snippets. And she was able to say, yes, that's exactly what I heard. And so together, it's, she was actually speaking Lyran or hearing Lyran, but together we were able to kind of help her. And she said that um, after, after that, she had wonderful dreams and just so many tingles and she really felt an awakening. And so um, if you guys just stick with it, if you have questions, you know, Wendy and I are always here. There's so many others in the Hukulo group that work with light languages and galactic languages. Um, some of them, you know, we can translate into English. Some of them are meant to be felt. Some of them are for healing DNA sequences or opening up your DNA sequences. Um, your downloads, there's just so many wonderful things we can do with them. I've already sent um, galactic light languages to clients to help them collect their um, fragmented pieces. Um, we've done things to help with a particular past life that they were struggling with, uh, to open up the, their um, third eye in order to be able to, to go back to that life and, and grab those pieces and heal. So there's just so many things you can do with the written language and with speaking it that it's kind of endless. It's not like we think of English languages where what we say is what we mean and that's it, you know. So, okay, Wendy, so. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And one of the things that I got so excited about with light languages were these light codes and it's something that I use a lot in private sessions along with the light languages is these written light codes that come through for people that meditate and, and and actually receive these, these like glyphs and symbols that are meant for like that person to help um, them activate themselves. And, uh, so it's something that I've been really getting more into and um, have had a lot of really amazing uh, interactions and uh, have had a lot of great um, feedback from clients in sessions about the combination of all this. And I did want to add to, you know, this whole idea of, of Oracle cards and, you know, everything that we use as a permission slip to allow information to be received from us. I mean, you know, received by us from our guides. And that includes these Oracle cards. And I was told, um, you know, during my awakening process that I'm also, you know, that I am an Oracle. And so something, it's just something that excites me to be able to bring intuitive information through 
Um, and so, and I, I know that's something that Alicia likes to do as well. You know, she really, um, you know, we really like bringing um, answers and information through Oracle cards, you know, so, and it's fun, it's engaging, it's, um, it engages all of our sen our senses, you know, because it's got pictures and words and emotions behind it. And we receive, as you become more intuitive and these light codes um, awaken you, if you will, in light languages, you, as you become more intuitive, you start to understand, you can he actually hear, okay, what is it cells that I need today? What do I need to eat? What color should I wear? Um, what is it? What elements do I need? What vitamin and minerals do I need? We really, we literally learn to become so acutely in tune with our body and our, our environment and what we've created that we really start to understand that if I order something in the universe, I'm going to get it as long as I don't put anything in it. If I, as long as I don't create the resistance, it's already there. We, we prove that every single day, every single day, you know, I want a new couch and then you go manifest a new couch, you know, it, but we don't think of it as manifesting because we're not like creating it like magic. But if you, so that works with everything you put out an intention and then you activate that intention by your frequency. And then your guides will give you circumstances, people, information um challenges to they're going to give you that in order for you to answer what it is that you're looking for vibrationally speaking and your response to that is your and their indicator as to whether or not you're ready to take the next step this is the thought that i was trying to grab earlier that they wanted me to impress upon was just that that when you you actually begin to activate your ability to activate your own awareness you be able you activate your ability to connect with everything in your creation and then it's your belief systems that allow you or disallow you to create that or interact with it it's when we don't know what's blocking it. That's the, that's always the challenge, right? When you say, well, I've got this thing, but I don't know what it is. That's when our guides uh, come in and they say, okay, I'm going to show you what it is by way of identification of color, songs, um, numbers, sacred geometry, shapes, dreams, messages, automatic writing, symbols. So, they're feeding us the answers all the time but then we sit back and we go oh, no, no. they're not talking to us i have no connection i don't see it i don't understand i don't well it's because we're not listening and so when we go into that heart center in that place of intentional activation then we're saying okay guys i'm ready for more i'm giving you the signal that i really am ready I learned that lesson. I don't need to stay in that lesson of that vibration because that's really all karma is, is staying in the vibration of the same behavior pattern and not allowing yourselves to ascend beyond it because you're, we are sitting in belief systems that no longer serve us because we don't know how to let them go. And so our guides are saying, then just ask. I don't know how to let this thing go. Please show me how to let it go. And by way of synchronicities, your guides are going to show you and your ET friends are going to give you all the information and how you respond to that information. It's just like, a, it's just like the rest of us as, as children, we're given lessons and tasks. And until we can perform that task successfully, why would we be given an additional task if we don't understand? And it's the mathematical metaphor as well. Why would you, why would you be given a physics problem if you don't even understand algebra so or you know basic math so you just don't know what to do with it you know um so if something excites you and you feel like there's something blocking you from pursuing that excitement to allow you that abundance into your life to say i want to do this thing in my life that i'm excited about but i don't know what's blocking me from doing that and light languages helps me unblock that and so i'll ask my guides yes yeah, so show me i'll go say show me Show me what it is that's not, that's not been revealed to me that's blocking this thing. I can't see it. What is it? And then show me 
how to get rid of it by way of meeting people in my life or seeing a YouTube pro, you know, a YouTube video or something. And, and they're showing me this is, I'm giving you your answer and now it's how you respond to that answer. Some people, sometimes we ask for something, we get it and we're all not quite ready for it yet. And then we sort of put it on the back shelf because we're not ready yet. The idea is to be okay with not being ready for it yet either. To not beat yourself up and judge yourself about, I'm not where I want to be spiritually yet. I'm not doing this. I'm not channeling. I'm not doing that. I'm not. Stop that. Because that's what's preventing you, me, all of us from doing the things we want to do. Is because we keep saying. And that's another thing. Don't say it. Don't think it. And definitely don't say it out loud. Don't say, I can't. I'm not. I Anything after we say, I am, is so now we're understanding the power of that, the power of the language and self-talk. That's why I did that whole Bashar 49 days, self-love, knowing thyself challenge. It's all about self-talk. It's about if you can't look yourself in the eye with complete and other unconditional love and self-love, how are we going to greet our galactic higher, the higher vibration? We have to meet them someplace. And if we can't find self-acceptance and self-love in our own human, in our own selves, and then in our own human beings, how in the world are we going to connect with higher vibrational beings? And then we wonder, oh, well, why aren't they here? Well, because they're because they're like the parents standing over the little kid going, because you don't get it yet. Because you don't get it yet. And so, and then you get even more, you know, and, and they don't even judge us for not trying. <laughs> they just go, well, you know, it's okay. You're not ready. That's okay. So, is there any questions or comments on any of that at this moment? If nobody has one, I have a, a comment. Um, so, for those of you who are like this wonderful woman who texted me last night and was wondering, like, what specific language she speaks, a mm -hmm. lot of us have to understand that. Um, there's base languages, like base galactic languages, but then there's also a soul language. And a lot of times with these galactic languages, because you're, you come from such a mix of various groups, you're combining multiple languages. Yeah. So don't, when you're searching for these things, you know, don't think that you're going to find if it's like specifically Lyrian or specifically Palladian. Um, and like we can kind of tell you what characteristics are of the certain languages, but don't expect it to be just one. And sometimes it may just be a soul language, which is your own language. And so um, I think, cause I know when I started speaking, I really wanted to know the specifics of everything to try and understand it. But sometimes there really isn't specific. So don't let that hang you guys up on your journeys. Right. And I'm glad you mentioned that because that is something that Shell told me in the private session with, with Jim too, was he said, so he started talking to me. He says, okay, and then I was talking, he says, okay, now you're actually speaking only Sasani, only Shikani. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But he says, up until that time, he thought I was actually mixing like four or five different languages because they were just, it's almost like when I get ready for a session or when I'm meditating to get ready for like today, it's like I hear everybody going, everybody has something to say. Everybody wants to put in their, because that's what we're asking for is we want information from all of these, you know, entities. So the same thing's happening to us. And so we're receiving, so many of us will jumble up <laughs> the languages until we kind of learn to separate them. And a lot of times we learn to separate them by listening to other people. When they, if I hear somebody on YouTube and they say, oh, I'm speaking Syrian or I'm speaking Pleiadian. And then I start speaking like they do. Then of course my brain says, oh, I must be speaking Syrian. I must be speaking Pleiadian. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't know whether that's right or wrong, um, other than we're going with our instincts, and, and which is good. So the best I can say to anybody is that's only the only way I know is for some is to go with my instincts, listen to what they're telling me, and also maybe by listening to other people and saying, oh, I think you're speaking Syrian or Lyrian or um, Pleiadian, uh, Pandorian, angels, um, you know, you name it. They're the, the uh, reptilians, insectoid. Right. Uh, 
I've recently discovered my soul mantis origins and the, the my soul name and my soul family and the colors I'm associated with that deep purple that deep royal blue that deep emerald green those have been my my colors all my life you know those are the colors that I've always been completely drawn to so when I learned that we also have to remember about discernment you know that when you hear something if it doesn't resonate with you, then it's either not time, you're not ready, you have belief systems that are preventing you from absorbing the information, or it's just not for you. <laughs> it's, and it's okay. It's okay to say that doesn't resonate with me. That doesn't make sense to me. We seem to we seem to remember we seem to forget the fact that I don't care who's channeling or channeler, we're being channeled too. And that's another thing they wanted me to talk about. So but you know we have to remember that every single perspective, whether it's an archangel, it, it's it's it, your perspective is just as equal. This is what they are trying to get us to understand. You are equal to everything else in creation. What you would do affects everything else in in creation as well. That's a very powerful statement when you understand that you cre everything you do changes every single thing in all of creation. And so once we, but once we understand that, we understand that responsibility. We carry the humility and the power behind that. And that's what's important is to see yourself, that God self, that, that knowing that what you do and say and think is, and you better be careful about that then because that does carry responsibility. But that's okay because that's what we're supposed to be learning here is, oh, okay, in order for me to create the life and the reality that I want, I have to believe this about myself. I have to. Because there's nobody else doing it for you, is there? And every time we rely on somebody else for our happiness, the answers. They're always gonna, every single one of the, the emissaries of the Light Collective are never gonna give you the answer. They're gonna show you how to find your own answer. They're gonna show you how to, they're gonna lead you right back to yourself to, sh to say, you already have the answer. This is what the teachers are teaching. The other teachers is to teach everybody else. You already have the answer, Dorothy. Um, it's already been you all along. You know, you already have the magic slippers. So, we have to stop believing that we're not equal. We have to stop believing that everything out there is for us. It's for us, for also for our discernment. Because how else do we know what is for us and what isn't for us unless we react to something and say, that's not for me. And there's, you know, Alicia and I were discussing this actually even this morning as we were getting ready for this that we were talking about other channelers too. And that, you know, there were some that there was a time when I would listen to them and, or I would listen to and, and, and really relate to them or I'd listen to them for three seconds and go, yeah. and then I'd be like, well, but they're so popular and so many people really like them and their information helps so many other people. And my guides are like, but you're not them. You're not that you're not their frequency. We're all in different places at the different times. And so we have to be discerning about the information that's out there because part of learning who we are is learning who we're not and what does and doesn't resonate. Go ahead, Alicia. Oh, um, Michelle, Michelle has a question. Yeah, go ahead. And how are we doing on time? I don't want to go too, too. okay, we're good. Oh. We're good. <laughs> Are you there, Michelle? Or do you want me to answer it? Or yeah, you ask it? I can answer it for you unless you want to. Okay. So she says, is it necessary to put things right with those we have wronged in the past? That again is a perception. When you say wrong, that's a judgment on yourself. Now say when, when you say wrong, what we usually mean by that is we've hurt someone's feelings. We feel responsible for their reaction to what we did. So the answer to me is you're not actually writing the wrong for the other person. You're trying to fix what discomfort and resistance you feel about the circumstance. We, that's what we do. Um, now, we have to remember, and I know this is one of the biggest challenges and lessons for being a human is to stop believing that somebody else's response to what you did said has anything to do with you, because it doesn't. It has zero to do with you. Everything, just 
if, if Alicia says something to me and I react to it, my reaction is based upon all my belief systems and thoughts and all the crap that I've brought to the table in order for me to receive that. And then my guides are saying, okay, how do you want to munch that up? And how do you want to respond to that? Do you want us to respond negatively, positively? How do you feel about it? If it trips your trigger, then it's something inside of you that you need to look at. So if you're feeling bad, we, I've got lots of people in my life that I, feel, I have thought in the past, because that's also something we were taught to believe in the program was that you go back and make amends. Now, if we understand that everything is, if we truly understand how creation works and we understand that we're living in an experiential universe, that even though we believe it happened, it didn't really happen. It was an experience. It had to feel real, but it's just like a movie clip screen frame. Excuse me. So and millions of times per second, we're going through this movie screen and then we're, 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 our mind is responding to the stimuli. And then we have a, an, a, an emotional response, an energy emotional response to that idea. That energetic emotional response changes based upon our belief system. We all know that. If you change how you feel about something, it's like, haven't you ever met somebody you absolutely hated? And then once you really got to know them, you're like, God, this place, it's like, this, this person's wonderful, you know? So it's all about changing your perspective. Once you change your perspective, you, everything about your creation changes then. So obviously, because if you hated the person before and now you love them and you're spending all this time together, well, you wouldn't have never spent the time together. So the idea is to stop judging the idea that you hurt somebody, that you, that their response to what you did is your, that you need to carry that burden or that responsibility. This is what we're, when we're talking about healing karma, this is where we go back and say, Let's find the root of that and heal the part of me that feels as if I feels that I'm responsible for that person's discomfort. We're constantly people pleasing. We're constantly saying, you're more important than I am. So therefore I'm going to behave in a way that I'm going to be careful about what I say, do and feel and act because I'm afraid of what your response is going to be. Their response is, it doesn't matter. Just like Bashar said, so what? Who cares what they think? It doesn't matter. What matters is what you think about that thing, because that's what needs to be healed. And so if that other person is telling you otherwise, well, then they've got issues they need to work out. That's got nothing to do with you. Your issue is you, and why do you feel responsible? Why do we continually feel responsible for the things we did in our past? So we're telling ourselves now to send ourselves back in time and send that person unconditionally love and healing. Send that version of you back then. Physically feel yourself going in this you now, right now, and walk in there and go hold their hand and say, it's okay, it's gonna be okay, everything worked out fine. This is just an experience. Somehow this idea is serving you today. There's something in this nugget of information from your spirit guides right now that's telling you that this thing that's still floating around in your awareness, there's something that you feel about yourself that, that's, that is, it, that's negative, that doesn't align with your highest version of you and source and what source, the source feels about you and that thing that you think you did. Now, Sopo Ishinate said, that's what this 2011 is about of allowing all of this to let go, the judgment of all of that, and sending every single one of our fractals healing. And I've done this a few times in meditations, and I've been just, the, the bouncing back of the feelings that I, I mean, I was in tears, just feeling the relief of all of that anguish, of all of that pain, of all of that responsibility, and all of the mud just washing away from me. When I finally let that go and realized, this is just an experience, just like everyone else. Think about the people that you feel have harmed you or hurt you and how we know that the poison of unforgiveness simply, you know, kills ourselves. And so we understand that. And this is what's happening. We're all finally understanding our multidimensionality and that we can take this information and bring it into the now. And, for, and you know, and I, I even want to get rid of an idea of forgive. Because it means it still means that you've done something wrong, and wrong is just a judgment. It was an experience, and it, it has taken me personally a long time even to 
come to terms with that myself in the things that I've done that I'm ashamed of or that I was a victim of. Um, because once you also learn that you create your own reality, there carries that idea then. If I'm not a victim, then I created it. And how could I have created such a horrible, ugly situation? Well, you know what? <laughs> we all did. I mean, think about the ones who've decided to experience being a murderer or a murderee or, you know, it's an experience. And we can't judge that experience as being less or bad or good or better or anything. We can't. And one that's the whole point is <laughs> everybody else is none of our business. <laughs> Once we, the idea is to become in touch with us and our relationship with our source and all of our beingness is the only thing that matters and everything else just the healing begins. That's where the healing truly begins. Yeah, we'll say, does that answer your question? Yes, I'll put the other. Good. <laughs> yes. Yes, it does. Do we want to talk about um, maybe like what what's ahead for 2018? Um, or like, because so many people have been dealing with the end of 2017, which has been kind of rough. But I think come 2018, um, it's going to kind of lift and things are going to start to get better. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. And, and, I and really we were just talking it. about how we just had this major um, timeline jump. So things, yeah. things are going to get better. You know, I, I kind of have to laugh about that, too, because it's funny how, like, the UFO thing and the sightings and how it all just sort of, and it's it's interesting because there were so many channelers out there um, and people who were discussing the timeline jump that, um, and how the continents changed and countries disappeared. And, and yet it's so funny how it's just like, huh, you know, oh, okay, so it's as if the belief system, you know, it's just so interesting. And, and so the, yes, this 2011, this is what this Wait, is. Wendy, it's not 2011. You keep saying 2011. It's I keep saying 2011, 18, because I'm hearing 11 in my mind. 20, I know. Equally 11. <laughs> but you know what? Isn't that funny how I keep saying 2011? I know. Well, 11 is an important number, you know. Well, 11, 11, 11 was mm -hmm. one of the, portal opening activation days, dates. And right. I, I can go back to one of my journals on that day where I wrote in my journal that day that, oh, and 11-11 is also always been, you know, synchronistic with light workers. It also happens to be Bashar's birthday, November 11. Um, we've always seen 11 as a gateway. Um, a portal, if you will, the idea of the twin flame, the idea of looking at ourselves once and for all and seeing ourselves for the beauty and the light that all that we are. That's how I feel this 11 is, this reflection of the, the 11 vibration. And it's as if we've all, all of us in this room, anybody watching, anybody interested in any of this, we're all here together for for, for this time, this epic time that everybody's been writing out about for millennia and millennia and millennia. And I truly believe that this whole idea of this 1111 and it's been going on as ever since I was a kid, I remember talking about 1111, seeing it on the clock. I would come home from school and have a bad day and I'd say, I was, I'm out of sync with my universe today. I mean, my, you know, they'd be looking at me like, you are really weird. Um, so 11 has always somehow been significant and I really feel that this 2018 and this vibration and this idea of January 1st 1 1 and then 2018 equaling 11 I don't know why but I keep I I'm just having this burning feeling as if some huge like heart opening um like we're all going to walk through this gateway uh, on this 11 11 you know 1 1 1 1 energy day realizing each of us maybe relatively yeah and individually but but like collectively each of us discovering something like really amazing or miraculous about ourselves about our world about something that we didn't understand or see before that somehow and i don't mean this to be woo woo we are like all of a sudden woo we're all gonna wake you know but i feel like it's all gonna happen to us on a different 
level, but for each of us, it's going to be such a significant, like, like, like light code activation that for each of us, it's going to be singularly, <laughs> um, but yet collectively significant. And the idea that today, that all of these channelers today are gathered, I'm reminded right now by my ET friends that our guides, all of us today in this room right now, they're here and all of them are being represented. And I'm, I'm hearing right now as this day goes on in all of these channelers, the energy that we're bringing to the earth today with all of these, these channelers that most of us are familiar with um, is all happening today in this energy right now, as we speak, you know, um, in our 3D world, it's happening in California right now. And, and all of these energies, I feel like this 1111 idea portal, like this day was supposed to happen, that, uh, that channel panel was supposed to happen, that, that this today was supposed to happen today with light languages and talking about this, all of this and coming full circle for me and coming home, you know, um, you know, to, to human colony and all of it is about ushering in this 2018 energy, this 1111 portal that for each of us, it's going to be, it's going to, I, uh, they show, they're showing me like each of us, they're showing me like doors flinging open, like in, in hallways for each of us that it's like, we're all going to wake up and like, we're going to open the shutters like, um, intentionally, uh, energetically like opening the shutters in our doorways to rooms we've never allowed to open for ourselves before like we have this big old house and we're just saying you know what it's time to live it's time to open all the doors open all the windows live my life sing to the top of my lungs paint draw explore create travel give up the things that i that people have been telling me i need to do say act believe um, it's like, I just, I see the flinging, I just keep seeing it flinging the door open. It's like, they're opening up this portal. And someone had this question for me in one of my videos the other day about what does the Sirius star portal and 1111 and the Shikani and the Sasani, what does all this have to do with everything? Because everything's connected. And this 1111 portal is opening up the Sirius portal, the, the brightest star we can see, our friends from Sirius, which contains a great many different star families it's not just syrians that live there but the point is is that we're allowing this 11 11 inch um Chris, christ consciousness crystalline consciousness light worker energy activation to take place because we're all creating these spaces the channel panel that's happening today this the the light languages this 11 11 portal the serious star system is allowing this christ consciousness clear higher heart energy to penetrate the earth and you and me all of us who speak the languages whether you speak it out loud to yourself in your mind in public whether you write it whether you sing whether you dance whether you tone whether you do reiki whether you do it doesn't matter what you do in your 3d life everything you do is spiritual you're a spirit walking so everything you do is spiritual there's nothing that's not spiritual money is not not spiritual you're supposed to be amazing and abundant. You're supposed to be making millions of dollars doing what you love. That's the point. But we have all this crap and belief systems that prevents us from believing that that's okay. We're all supposed to be benefiting. We're all supposed to be shining. We're all supposed to be rich. We're all supposed to be amazing. Yet, and, and that doesn't mean that that's the same thing for everybody. Let me tell you, a big house to some people means like the last thing they want. You know, their idea of, of of um, having everything they need as a little tiny place in the middle of the woods. You know, here I am surrounded by trees in this, you know, basically a two room cabin. And I came from, a, you know, a big house. I raised a family in a neighborhood. So it's allowing us to be okay. It's allowing us to be okay moment by moment with where we are and also not being so connected to, well, I put so much time and energy into this thing that now I can't let it go because even though it's not really what I want, I can't let it go because it's all I know. 
and I'm too afraid to go on because I don't think I'm going to be supported. Well, crap. Of course you're going to be supported because you already have been. So if you're supported in doing the things you don't want to do, what makes you think you're not going to be supported in the things you do want to do? And that's what Bashar and everybody, Abraham, they've all been trying to tell us that, that once you move into the flow and be self-loving, self-accepting, self-knowing, accept who you are, every piece of you, that's why we're all channeling all these beings, because you are all those beings. <laughs> you know, there's a piece of you that is all of those things. And yet we also even, don't we separate that? Oh, well, reptilians are bad, insecto, blah, blah, blah. We already judge that, crying out loud. How many and how many beings has Jim Charles um, channeled in you know in, in human colony that we have really have changed our whole belief system on a particular idea of a race of a you know so we don't even know what we don't know and so we've got to like all of this is connected and I really believe that all of these things that we're being drawn to light languages channeling and all we are being there's other entities, if you guys can picture yourselves getting to the point where, and Jake the other day talked about this in one of his videos about being channeled. I, we are, you're, we are getting to the point where we're, we're raising our frequency so other beings and other star systems can channel our higher dimensional energy. We're being channeled also. That's a whole nother weird thing, right? So Weird meaning something we're not, we're so interested in channeling, we're forgetting to realize that there's beings out there who are looking for us and our knowledge and our process to know how did we muddle through this crap? How do we come to such a low vibration density planet where we are completely disconnected from our idea of source, of being connected to source? How did you guys do that? Do you know that there's beings out there and energies and entities out there that have no idea what it feels like to be to even believe that you're disconnected from everything. They have no idea what this is like at all. To even think that you aren't loved, that you're not supported, that you're not perfect. They can't even fathom that idea that you have any kind of a negative belief about yourself. They can't even understand that. They don't understand emotion. They don't. So we're teaching the cosmos by doing all of this um, together. And we're showing all that is how this is done you know this is earth is the only place we get to do this that i'm at least that we're aware of that i've been told and that other channelers have been told that this is it the whole cosmos is looking at earth little bitty little tiny tiny earth and little bitty milky way and all eyes are on us so so, Nisa, so whether you're speaking light languages or not, you're always activating somebody. Just with a smile. How simple can a smile, how simple does a smile, you can meet a whole, you can create a whole new timeline simply by smiling at somebody else and making a friend, it can change your life. Simply by eye contact, simply by a smile. Learn to look at yourself in the mirror and love what you see. Love your skin. Talk to your skin. Talk to your body. Talk to your molecules. Talk to the water that's in your cells. Your, what's the percentage? Like almost 80% water. We can talk to the water. We can bless our water. You're mostly water. We're mostly water. We have the power within us. You're, you get a cut. You heal. We're self-healers. We already know that. We can speed that up. So intentionally on this 11 energy, this 1111 energy, all of us intentionally. And this includes all of the emissaries of light camp collected, all of the realms. We're all in the same corner on this day, watching the earth wake up, allowing this love to penetrate these light codes of higher, loving, pink, crystalline, clear energy to penetrate the earth. Each one of you that intentionally strives to just tell yourself today 
I'm going to be lighter, brighter. I'm going to love. I'm go not going to worry. I'm not going to judge. I'm going to be kind and gentle to myself and everybody. Take those Reiki principles and expand them. Worry means you're in yesterday or tomorrow. So to so, it isn't until you're gratified and grateful for what you have that you've already created, that you can possibly create more. So to show ラミロソミアワコハトキサミケリキアトロスミレンコヤボリシノゴヤンコヤントヤビインカヤンソイラピロンコヤバロスミアワリンカリオンコヤバソコシェカヒワロコサプリアンワハロマワコテヤロニ
Yo Somo show. Nothing and no one comes to you uninvited, whether by intention or by frequency. Nothing ever comes to you uninvited. Masota Shibiranta, lose this idea now. There is freedom in this idea and this surrender. Freedom, utter and complete freedom to love yourself, to shine, to be divine, to feel divine. To stop comparing yourself to another. Not a snowflake or ice crystal or sand crystal is identical for a reason. So hold a pile of sand in your hand. You cannot count them. Yet they are all beautiful and unique. Each, each. A magnificent crystal that if you could see it with a microscope, you would weep in its beauty and its color yet you do not see yourself this way this is the portal no portal so put us on okio a son of tewa a local son of portion of ua by you show a whole nothing so to some cool not a choco was a little illness of course of it so food us and this is why you came this is why you struggled this is why to feel the power of letting that go, to feel the knowing you create the beauty around you and the ugliness around you. What are you focusing on? Energy always flows where focus goes. Masoto shuri wakono. Are you thinking about what you can't have and why you can't have it based upon the beliefs that you have carried with you? How do you see your life changing? No. This is the time. This is the time for you to see yourselves as who you truly are. How capable and how powerful a smile and a kind, loving gesture can be. How it opens the door to a new timeline, a new earth, a new vibration, a new understanding, a new currency, a releasing of the idea that you and your creation isn't enough, that you are not valuable. You're releasing the idea of currency to show you your own value, that each of you can trade your services, but you must become authentic in your service because it's service to yourself. And when you serve yourself, you are serving the all and you have no abundance is the only path then. Each of these things is connected to each of these things. But until you become your authentic self, you don't bring to the table this authentic, pure light that you are. Bringing in everything that you do. the body, mind, heart, and spirit into it. You can tell when you interact with someone in your world, whether it is they know their connection to source. And you as humans become uncomfortable when someone reflects back to you the idea that you are not resonating in your highest frequency and therefore you show anger toward them and the anger is simply that you are not vibrating authentically that you wish to do so 
and yet you lash out and become more inside yourself and more judgmental and more critical. This is the gateway to walk through. To let go of that. Let go of those judgments and beliefs that have prevented you from being the most amazing. Whatever it is that you do, be the most amazing of that and bring that service to the world and be the brightest that that you can be and trade that service with another full separation until you value yourselves you will remain in this devaluing idea that one is of your reality in every area, every country. You are human, collective, consciousness. As you become more and more yourselves, you are already beginning to see how you're attracting those of your light vibration to you fulfilling your need for that connection that love and that light that divine spark within you those are the people you want to be with the people that remind you of your divine spark not the limitations not what you can't do and why you can't do it yeah attract to you those who are supportive and loving and kind and share your joy and excitement. There is no competition here. There is only gathering of love and light and making each of you and your lights brighter. That each of you may see your own path more clearly and brightly than ever before. This is the 2018 11, 11 portal. Now portal is in it is the opening, the alignment, the perfect alignment of you, your higher self, your soul families, your spirit guides, the animals and angel kingdoms, the el the elementals. You feel yourselves finally being able to converse with all things in all realms and all times and gathering the information from that one infinite stream of information you have the answers within you and yes as you continue to seek validation and confirmation you will receive it by way of challenges and discernments and bliss and love in interactions. Yeah, body is like you want to see. You're bringing your multidimensionality and ushering in the fifth dimensional planet and a species. This has never been done before. You are to be rewarded and congratulated. None of you, none of you. Have come here here by accident. You know, one take us not to. And yet, all of you have chosen a particular path, some more difficult than another. Yet, you would not trade that path with another for another. Not truly. Now, both say not to. Love your skin. Love your eyes. Love your body. Love your toes. Even if you had no toes, congratulate the body, congratulate yourself for living with no toes. Diaso, realize that you chose this vessel to portray and connect on a particular level for a particular reason because you are perfect the way you are. Not tosing. And we feel the time has come 
Mi a tosa mi ki wala sa mabia wu, ko sa nape wu wu, ya. Tu wibiu, ti amo ko ya sa na shere ya wu wu nye wu. Mi bo sa mabia, as we stand with you in this gateway, feel us. In this one one, one one doorway that you are approaching, feel us standing beside you, holding your hand, walking together with you and knowing that you will never be the same again. Mi a wu ni a ta. That you are guided and loved beyond measure, unconditionally, unequivocally, and ubiquitously across every timeline. That you have the power to heal and raise the vibration and send love and healing to any part of you at any time. Go back and visit and let it go. This is the time to move and look forward. There is no past. There is no future, there is only now, now, and now, and now, and now. Allow yourself to experience all the nows and bring into this now, any now you need. No blessing. And we love you, and we love you, and we love you beyond measure, and beyond time. You have the ability to create and stop time. You will know this now. Okay. And we love you and thank you for accepting these light code attunements, these illuminations of heart, mind, body, and spirit as they allow you to usher in higher dimensional frequencies of understanding, of self knowledge and relinquishing all beliefs, thoughts. Thoughts become things. Release, releasing a thought that becomes a belief before it becomes a reality, before it becomes a manifestation. You have the power to stop time in that way. Hi, everybody. <laughs> that was amazing. Yo, Sophia. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, everybody. Sorry about the time. I just could feel like it was, they were telling me it was time to move on. So, Yamo, please say, I was shooting. Yeah. Thank you. So, I did pull a card while you were doing that. I felt drawn to pull a card. Yay, I love that. And. Hi, baby. <laughs> And I got the priestess of Cirrus, the lady of the star. Oh my God. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. So this is what she says. Um, it says, Cirrus is a celestial goddess, the star of unconditional love and wisdom at an extremely high vibration. It keeps deep soul awakening, spiritual gifts at a high capacity for divine service. Lady of the stars is also an empowerment of all other Oracle decks oracles in this deck she tells you to pay attention because something significant is about to take place the energy takes the inner path uh, uh, the energy takes the inner path and a spiritual healing journey into a whole new stratosphere it is wise ancient and extremely high vibrational energy it takes a certain level of soul evolution to be able to consciously register syrian light and transmit it on this planet the heart in question must be able to consciously cultivate unconditional love for it to occur. However, we can still receive Syrian light and healing assistance, even if we are still learning to more, to more consistently come from unconditional love. We will feel it more and more strongly as we grow spiritually. But even in our learning phase, we can open our hearts to the divine celestial goddess and allow her, through her priestess Lady Isis, to bless us with genuine spiritual gifts. Uh, Cirrus is reaching out to you now and offering great spiritual support and a message that there is something significant that you need to be aware of. Accepting celestial acceptance, wait, sorry, so accepting celestial assistance in an unconditional love of Cirrus will help you now. To receive the assistance, you can choose to surrender your heart and allow divine love 
to infuse, heal, and direct, and all unfold all aspects of your life and growth. A total trust and surrender is needed with absolute faith that even unexpected twists and turns will lead you in the best direction. <laughs> well, need I say more? I mean, it. how sick was that? that you pulled? I mean, I, I, this is what I'm talking about, you guys. You can't make this stuff up. And that's all I could see was this, this serious portal and letting in this light and the 11 11. And, and so, uh, and the card actually, <laughs> the card actually looks like she's coming out of a portal of um, light, like, like oranges yeah, and yeah. yellows. Sure. Show us, show us. Okay, okay, okay. okay. Uh, now it's time to, to start the song. Let's twist again. <laughs> oh my God, look at this. <laughs> so she's very empowered, wow. very, very okay with self, you know, unconditional love. Just feel, things flow. This is so weird, you guys, because as I'm channeling, it's almost as if that's who I was feeling and seeing and hearing while I'm like, like this. I don't know. I just, it's like if you could picture the being, you know, because sometimes I, you know, we can, of course, we could picture the being that's talking. And it's as if I, her, that essence of what that looks like was what I was feeling. I don't know how else to explain that. Wow. Talk about synchronicity. Please. Yes. Yeah. That was a perfect way. Wow. That was so perfect. It was like, I was actually going to, I was like, you know what? I'm not even going to draw another card. Oh, that's well, just, you can. It's too. Um, it's just too perfect though because it was like the perfect closing card for that it was almost as if that card was the um, the validation of that information that came through wow that was just so mind-blowing for me wow thank you <laughs> see thank and you with your intuition though to pull the card because that was huge and you know i was thinking um i'm gonna pull a card and i wanted to pull a different card but my intuition and my hand kept going back to that deck and I was like, okay, fine, I'll do it. I'll do it. Like, okay, fine. That's obviously what you want. And I, and I started, I did start doing some symbols here and there, which kind of looks a little kind of weird and messy, but, um, so, um, I do and a these, lot of these. I, I post these on my Facebook page on languages of lights on Facebook, on my Google plus page, um, on languages of lights under and under, um, uh, and on the Google Art and Script page, I encourage everybody out there. Amazing Grace, hi Grace. Um, I encourage everybody out there. If you're, you know, even if you get a sentence or a word or a symbol or, you know, get it out there in the world because we're all out there to activate each other. Did you want to say something, Grace, while you're here? Did you want to give a say anything or give a blessing or anything since you popped in? I just want to give everybody a chance to say something if they want to. Hi, Shiny. Is he still here? Oh, he left. Hey, honey. Ti aposta te iwa ki esta nota che valia casa. Dia. So. Thank you all for your energy. I'm so happy you were here. Thank you, Alicia. Thank you all for being so patient with us as we went through our technical stuff and starting late. And, and I hope everybody will, will make sure that we get this, um, you know, the, the link out there for the YouTube video so everybody can watch it and we'll, you know, figure out how to get it where it needs to get. Um, anybody have any comments, blessings, um, anything at all? I will do a blessing to start off. And then if anybody else would like to do a blessing, please do. And thank you, Alex. Go ahead. Dubuya Namaste. Namaste. 
do you get an impression as to what was being conveyed? No, I just kept thinking in my head, this is a really great example of mixed languages. <laughs> <laughs> that's, well, that's good too. But actually you were pretty, you know, you were actually, that was really consistent. I kept seeing pyramids um, as you're speaking. So I'm seeing Lyran Syrians. Yeah, it was Lyran. Yeah, it was Lyran Syrian. I, yeah, I was seeing Lyran, Lyran Syrian energy. I was seeing pyramids. I was seeing the Sphinx again. I well, I get a lot of that energy. You, you Alicia do. And have, Alicia and I have a lot of that Egyptian time. We have a lot of these. Egyptian connections. Yeah, so we have a lot of that Syrian kind of thing going on. So yeah, part I, of this eleven eleven is is activating those grids that connect all the pyramids and all you know all the wonderful um energy holders the ancient wisdom holders that we have on this planet so that we can open up and actually i kind of posted it while you're talking but um the other card i pulled let me click the other card i pulled was this um awakening ancient wisdom so um it goes yeah it goes with with everything it's all synchronistic so <laughs> <laughs> that's perfect I just love it. Yeah, posa ila kasana te kila. So to impaka yanto uno no shua kua ma atu so uno kua sha ki kua tu umo tosha ka ani kia soma asho anu u kua seki inki sado uso no po uno osho kua ba. So what they just showed me was that they were reminding me of a couple of different channelers, um, including Bashar and someone else recently who were discussing the, um, and, and Alicia and I have talked about this before too, on and off camera, about the, um, the seek, okay, I'm hearing it in my head right now. The secrets that are held within the Sphinx, the secrets that are held within the Sphinx, the, speak, the secrets that are held within the paw of the Sphinx, and how many of you have met here before and continue to meet here on a regular basis energetically to open this door to they keep showing me the 33rd like the the idea of the the ancient uh what do you call it? the mystery schools the idea of the 33rd parallel the idea of opening up the door to the mystery schools that's what i keep hearing and it all is tied and it's tied into our understanding and our uh, of the pyramids of the connection of them um, and the pyramids on pyramids on the earth mars um, and the moon it's all tied into the the energy from sirius the sirius portal the syrians were um Miatoya highly responsible for the pyramids. Miatoza be ikiatewa. So let's say the 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 information that's going to be revealed. Ibakushinada is going to help reveal these connections and our connections to you know and and the power behind this pyramid energy. Miatobi yapasa mi ilikina so potishiba kiawarinkiya sotoya. So the Syrian energy, this 1111 portal, all is tied in. And then we've got, and it's funny how Grace popped in because we've also been talking about um, Epsilon Epiphany and Eclipse, the uh, Shikani Oversoul um, energy that also is allowed to come through more, more purely and strongly, which is, which is unconditional love that is also pouring through this, this portal, if you will. And, and, each of us are portals and as each of us starts speaking and channeling and opening ourselves to being higher versions of ourselves we're literally opening portals within our own area our own neighborhoods our own it's like we're little beacons of light it's like as soon as we start to do that we're like this lighthouse that lives in our neighborhood that we're sending out a beacon a frequency of to our tribe and and to help find each other. So each of you, each of us is a, an illuminator, a way shower, a beacon, a lighthouse for the next person where you live, you know, and yeah. And yeah. So anyway, I could keep going. <laughs> you know me guys, I could do this all day long. 
<laughs> See, I, thought, I would like, yeah, is there anybody else? I'd like to invite anybody else um, if you want to put it in the chat. Um, thank you also for Michelle. Michelle, all of you guys that, that I've just been starting to interact with, I'm so happy you're here today to join in this energy, whether you don't, you know, whether you talk or didn't talk. I feel you. I always feel you. And, and, and as I say in all my videos, and I am not kidding, every time I meet somebody new, it's as if they're a new part of my energy. And when I make a video, it's as if every part of you is in the video. It's as if I'm bringing every time I meet somebody new, it's as if I'm bringing all of you with me to the camera, to the video. And you're there, even though you, you, I can't explain it, but it's true. So that's how it, that's how so uh, intricately woven we are together, and how when we send out our beacon by being ourselves and not being afraid to to do this, you know, um, you know. So that's why we're here today. <laughs> so yeah, go yes. the other. <laughs> and, and a while ago, Max had posted in, in one of the Hukulo groups. Um, on Facebook for people to share their stories and Wendy and I exactly. love hearing your story So if you if you do make a video or you want to share in any way We we love to hear them because everybody yeah, is unique yeah. and different Same thing with Alicia, you know, she's been posting videos on her temple beautiful YouTube channel too about her stories her twin flame story her process her so it's really great for all of us to get out there and just you know, a lot of people who come from the outside in go, oh, you know, light language isn't channeling. And but you know what? We're all just people. We all have, we all started as babies and we went through life and we had stuff and families and relationships and garbage and, and shit we need to heal. And I'm no different from anybody else. None right. whatsoever. Right. So this is what we, we need to share is this, you know, we're family here. And when, when that's the, the one thing, when I found Human Colony, we were immediately like in hangouts hours and hours and hours together for just like private. I don't mean live. I just mean we would meet each other and we would just hit. And how many times have you and I hung out, Alicia? And we're like, we'll be together for like hours. And we were like, God, we should have recorded this. It was just so, know. Epic, you know, <laughs> we're like all this great stuff we share. Know. But the thing is, is that we also know because what we know, we know it's going out to the Akash so that when you guys meditate, you get to tap into that information. We all are putting information out there so that we all can extract information from the same source. There is nothing outside of all that is. Nothing. You're part of all that is and everything. Everything is in there. So this is what they are trying to show us, that there's nothing that separates all of us except for belief systems. So so even when she and I or any of us are hanging out privately, we're changing the vibration of the entire cosmic order. And this is what we humans fail to understand the power that we have to completely change the cosmic order simply by interacting with each other. And even, in, even when you go into your own meditation, you have changed the cosmic order because you have literally said, I'm intentionally going to go into a place of higher learning, higher understanding, higher vibration, even for that moment. And now from that moment on, you guys, you're, well, none of us are the same person that we are moment by moment anyway, but truly when you do that, you have really shifted to a whole nother, a whole higher versional, you know, higher vibrational version of who you are. And then the people, the, the version of those people that you're interacting with are also a higher vibrational version of them. And that gets really sciencey and Bashari and very, um, <laughs> you know, and, and we can get into the layers of that, but that's part of what this is all about is understanding that science, physics, metaphysics, spirituality, it, there is nothing, there is no separation. And Tesla has been trying to explain this to us, you know, Einstein, you know, they've all been trying to explain this to us in a 3d way. And now we get channeling, you know, channelers bringing in entities and even being able to channel Tesla and those guys, you know, and say, you guys got it all wrong until you figure out that everything's based on vibration, frequency, and resonance, then you'll finally start to have it figured out. And as you raise your vibration, then you encourage these secrets, secrets to come out. 
that we're all magic. We're <clears throat> all capable of healing. You're all capable of channeling and telepathy and all of that stuff. So gone is the belief systems that we are not capable of anything we want to be excited about. You That's all have the deep inner wisdom. It's everything is exactly. inside of you. And just sitting with yourself and taking time to just let that ego fall. And isn't it okay to be okay to be excited about something one day and the next day go, eh. Yeah. I don't, you know, I mean, it doesn't do anything for me anymore, you know, and or it's okay I mean, to have good days and it's okay to have bad days because that's where we're in this experience. It's, you know, but recognizing, that. recognizing that's that you're not right? feeling so great is the first step to raising that vibration and getting out of that. And as long as exactly. you understand that, then you guys are good to go. So, well, because when we feel something that we don't understand that feels weird, we call it bad because we don't understand it because it's energy. We don't understand, but it's just an emotion to show us what part of the, you know, where are we at in our, where you know, are in the path. How far of, yeah, how far, how far away from our frequency are we really? And that's all it is. And so when you understand that you go, oh, okay, I'm just, I just got to get back on track. And, and the question is sometimes though, is we don't understand the tools to do that. And I had to laugh. You guys have you ever been in a meditation where your, your spirit guide says something so effing funny that you bust out laughing out loud. So Yesterday I'm in a meditation and I'm thinking about the webinar and I'm thinking, and all of a sudden I get this metaphor where they're saying to me about tools and how they're showing planting a garden. And of course they have to use the, the word hoe because it's funny. <laughs> so they said, um, so you're planting a garden and you, you need a hoe, right? And so you hold the rows to get your seeds ready, right? But what you do is now, you don't let go of the hoe and you walk around with it and you take it to work with you and you take it to the bank and you take it to the grocery store and everyone walks around and goes, what is that you're carrying? Oh, that's just my hoe. <laughs> that's my hoe. And you're like, well, what do you need your hoe for? Well, I'm tilling a garden and I'm afraid to let it go. Well, didn't, it, didn't you already till the rows and stuff? Didn't you already like make the, well, yeah. Well, what do you need? Well, cause I'm afraid to let go of my hoe. <laughs> and so, and I'm laughing out loud hysterically. I'm like, what the hell? <laughs> I'm like, what kind of analogy is that? And, but as I'm, I'm laughing because I'm seeing the absurdity of it, walking around with a tool that you don't need to carry around all the time <laughs> because you're afraid to let it go. Trust. That the tool you have today is the tool you needed today. You hold your garden, you made your rose, you allow yourself a place to, to plant your seeds. Go set the tool down. Go allow yourself to pick up the next tool to till that garden. And it sounds like such a strange analogy, but I had I tell you, I just had to laugh because it was just because of the way they said it too, like. Yeah, I just well, cause I, cause it's my hoe. What do you mean? I don't want to let go of my hoe, you know. And I'm just so. But this is where the two is that you got to be fun with it, you know. And the Dalai Lama even says you guys got to lighten up and laugh, you know. And and because laughing is the highest vibration. When you make somebody laugh, and even if you don't know what to do to raise your vibration, but you know, then go turn on a funny movie or or a cartoon or something that anything that makes you laugh. Just do anything, like Abraham says, you know. Esther Hicks, you know, Abraham, go do anything that makes you feel better in that moment. Because that's what Bashar means by following your excitement as high as you can take it moment by moment. Go get a cup of tea, get a cup of coffee, get a drink of water, go look outside and wait. Because it's when you let go of the resistance that the epiphanies come. That the magic actually happens. And I think any more than that, um, barring any questions and bless final blessings, I think any more than that, I think is redundant. <laughs> Beautiful. Anybody have any final um, closing blessings? Thank you all for being here. Yes, thank you very much. Okay, so we will close. Thank you for um, hanging out with us. Uh, you can always look on the hookalo.org website to see what's going on. 
Um, hook up with us on Facebook. There's a lot of hookalo pages. So oh yeah, kind of fun. And Alicia, Alicia's on Temple Beautiful. She's got, and she's also got a pod. She's a, she is a historical apothecary. So we are a historical apothecary. <laughs> so if you're looking for historical apothecary goods with with DNA activations inside, we're your go-to source. <laughs> and me, I'm Wendy. Um, my name is Wendy Wolf. You can find me as Wendy Wolf on Google Plus. You can find me under Languages of Lights on. Google Plus and YouTube and on Facebook. I'm also, I started a Facebook page just under my initials, WL Wolf. Um, and so you can find me there. Uh, but I also have my Languages of Lights pay, uh, pages on Facebook. I've got a community page for anybody who wants to share their own light languages there. You are more than welcome to um, videos, scripts, languages, activations. Um, I'm always sharing stuff on Google, on Facebook, drawings. Um, you guys, I'm so grateful to all of you every single day for all of you, and you all know who you are. I am constantly, from the moment I am activating my technology in the morning, um, after I meditate and everything, um, I all day long I'm interacting with people on whether it's on Facebook private messaging, whether it's on Google Hangouts private messaging, Skype. All day long I'm interacting with all of you, um, whether it's video chats making videos on um, private sessions i'm starting to do more private sessions i'm i'm kind of finally getting to that point where my internet is more stable i'm my schedule my move i just moved for all of you guys who you know know what's going on um so things are kind of sort of you know finding finding their equilibrium and so um whether it's oracle card readings uh light language activations um galactic guidance uh um aquarian fire uh activating that holy spark inside of you um whatever it is you know i'm out there i'm here you can find me on languages of light um email me um and all of us are out there i encourage everybody to whatever excites you go seek out other beings who are sharing this information because if it weren't for them i wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for those those souls out there who i was actually shocked at how many people were already out there on youtube sharing light languages for years before i even knew anything about light language and so if it weren't for you know all of those channelers that i found and and then and then that's how i became you know an early founding member of human colony was because all of that by following my joy and excitement it brought me to there and the tribe and the family and i literally cried when i found these people because for the first time in my life i found people who thought the way i did who who saw the world in a, in a way that I did too, that I didn't even, and thank God for the internet that it brought us together. You know, I've been around computers since I was actually computer support and stuff in my, you know, 3D life. And I did that for a long time. And so I realized that all of this was a part of grooming. And so thank goodness that we have this place that we can come together from all over the world. I think that's so exciting, <laughs> you know, that, you know, we can be in different states in the United States and different countries all over the world and different continents and come together and show each other that we're all connected. In all of our uniqueness, we're exactly the same. Aren't we? We say we the same stuff, just different. So, but I love you all unconditionally. Alicia, would you like to give a blessing too before I give the last final closing blessing? Yeah, don't say. <laughs> sure. Um, so yeah, Wendy and I are here to help you guys. Hukla is here to help you guys. Um, we're more than happy to. Yes, and hukla.org. Yes, I don't want to forget yeah, that. Have, <laughs> have like, um, you know, just Google Hangouts where it's not live and you guys can practice your languages or, or ask questions. We just, you know, just let yes. us know. So, okay, blessing, and then we are really going to close it up. Uh, we're at about two, two hours and 20 minutes. So, oh, God. Um, that's good. That's good. It was that all, happens it was to all meant to be. Sorry, guys. That always happens to me. So, um, Nashika uho natiako o diato boluko o natiata nankiako hotiasha.
Idiaka oniato olo odiata la obia aya ona kiata diana. Shuku oto doaya hana, kata tia toko, koneata olea o tokia nata anatia kota, tutukaya bo ono tutu shuku to to tayano, toto tata 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 Namaste. Holy cow. I guess you got an activation. <laughs> wow, that was like I did I was all, all of a sudden I went, whoa. I'm okay. I be an inkia to inkia satati inkia sato inka be an inkia sato inko shova inkia una e onekia ayana iawa. You know, on to put yampa kitnia sata inka po inkia sato inko e la ki and shove anna ki and unkoya sapo la kapiata. And on to be anta fecha a wala kutsa. Shono Kuyama, Seteki, Salia, Ona, Toa, Shokoa, Sepikianta to Sabana. Simokola, Sapakola, Koya, Sanate, Walo Koma Kosa Tashewa Koloa. So in the Akola Kua, La Tea Loko, O Naya He, Lona He, Sukunaha, Sukuya Sanashe. And I meet you and greet you in your perfection. And I leave you in your perfection. Mahalo, namaste.